Good morning again, everyone. My name is Omoshala and I'm joined here by Dr. Tadros, Dr. Han, and um, Scott, one of the vascular surgery um, residents. And we're going to be presenting a case today of CLI from radio, with the radio to peripheral approach. Next slide. So this is a 52-year-old gentleman who is currently an active smoker with past medical history significant for CAD, GERD, um, and spinal stenosis, actually, um, status post lumbar fixation, who was actually presented with claudication. His past medical, um, past surgical history, excuse me, significant for an obifemoral bypass, um, an aortic endorectomy, and subsequently DCB angioplasty, and I'll further explain why um, he actually got those procedures. He's presenting here today for left lower extremity claudication. Next slide. Um, his vitals are within normal limits, physical exam, um, as um, stated on the slide. With um, vascular um, exam specifically today, he has no palpable, no palpable DP on the left or PT, and labs are within normal limits. Next slide. His medications are presented here with um, specific note of that he's on aspirin, on lipid-lowering agents, um, gabapentin, and also antihypertensives. Next slide. And here on the CTA, we can see there's um, non-calcified and calcified plaque within the non aneurysmal aorta. However, when we get to the level of the renal arteries, just below, we see that there's complete occlusion extending to the iliacs all the way to the femoral vessels. And there you can see his lumbar fixation hardware. And we can see there's reconstitution of flow at the level of the um, superficial femoral arteries. Here's a 3D reconstructive images, and you see there's no contrast opacification below the renals, and actually his middle colic arteries are supplying, um, are giving supply to the rectal distribution. So he subsequently underwent an, um, a, tran a transabdominal aorta bifemoral bypass with a 16 by 8 Dacron graft. And here's the postoperative CTA. You can play that. And here you can see there is patency of the aorta bifemoral bypass graft extending down to the level of the femoral arteries with occlusion of the native femoral, um, femoral arteries. And specifically turn your attention to the left side, you see there's narrowing at the anastomosis mm -hmm. there. And here at the level of the arch, it's just nice to take a look at whenever you're playing in a transradial approach, we see it's not ectatic or aneurysmal. Here's a 3D reconstructive image after the aorta bifemoral bypass. You see there's contrast opacification within the aorta and the two limbs. Next slide. Um, so in the interim, the patient still had persistent um, claudication, and we did notice that narrowing at the anastomosis on the left. So he subsequently underwent a left SFA and profunded DCB angioplasty using Lutonix balloons. On the uh, screen left is the completion angiogram. Although they do look small in caliber, there's a discrepancy between the graft and the native vessels, which is expected. Next slide. So the patient presented to clinic last, last month um, with persistent left lower extremity claudication, and um, a duplex was performed of the left lower extremity. And as we can see, there's elevated, um, there's doubling, at least doubling of the velocities in the SFA with um, blunting and resistive um, velocities ind indicating hemodynamically significant stenosis in the SFA, particularly around, around the region of Hunter's Canal was our um, prediction. Next slide. So in summary, we have a 52-year-old gentleman who is an active smoker with PAD, status post aorta bifemoral bypass, aortic endorectomy, and left SFA and profunda DCB angioplasty, presenting with persistent Rutherford classification 3 uh, claudication. Ultrasound indicates hemodynamic significant stenosis in the left SFA. So our plan today is a transradial uh, lower, lower extremity angiogram with left, lower, um, with left leg intervention. So we used... Uh, we put a five six slender sheath uh, in the radial artery on the left, uh, Barbo B. We used a vertebral and a uh, Benson wire to traverse the aortic arch down into the descending. And you can see me here cannulating the left limb of that bypass graft. Um, because it's a Dacron graft, I can be a little bit more aggressive in terms of how I cannulate that. Once we actually got down with the vertebral, you can see the area that we previously treated um, looks maybe about four millimeters, slightly um, worse than when we treated it last year, but overall not too bad. And you can see a huge discrepancy uh, between the Dacron graft and the native vessels. We got down to the SFA and did selective angiograms, and you can see this long tapered stenosis, uh, maybe roughly about five centimeters in length. 
And what we notice is that there's very sluggish flow beyond that stenosis and not very well collateralized, as you can tell. And even down to the foot, just very, very sluggish flow, but you get a hint that the anterior tibial, uh, posterior tibial, and perineal are, uh, are all filling. So we actually went ahead and put our five, six slender <laughs> Rumo uh, destination sheath. Uh, we used a 119 centimeter sheath and then subsequently used um, the um, CSI, uh, it's called Viper Cross. Use a uh, CSI Viper Cross CX crossing catheter, which is 200 length, to cross the lesion. So now that we've crossed the lesion, we re imaged, and we can see all the vessels are just widely patent. However, there's a severe inflow obstruction and, and poor filling as a result of the inflow problem. Yeah. So it's quite interesting well, how severe the different. inflow is restricting this. Yeah. I mean, do you th still think there's a problem at uh, up the at the proximal SFA? Do you think there's still some narrowing there that maybe? There's a little bit. It's probably yeah. roughly about a four millimeter lumen there, and okay. here we have about a one millimeter lumen at the distal yeah. SFA. So I guess the question I have for the panelists is. Given this runoff okay. here, would you consider CSI atherectomy, which is really the only atherectomy device that we can that can reach this lesion, versus just primarily angioplastying and stenting uh, that that severe SFA lesion? What I would say is, you know, if you had IVUS that could evaluate whether or not there's any significant degree of calcium there, then I think CSI is a reasonable option. If it's soft plaque, then I would probably proceed just with angioplasty and uh, provisional stenting if there's suboptimal results. Uh, but for a short lesion like this, I think angioplasty with provisional stenting would be the my uh, my uh, pathway here. Hey, this is Brandon um, Olivieri. I basically I agree with, with Dr. Uh, um, and uh, you know also taking into consideration when you're using the CSI. Is, is the runoff and whether there's more than one vessel, I, I take that into consideration. Generally, they, they claim that CSI doesn't really embolize, but definitely there's microparticulate matter that goes into the fetal arch. So I also want to look at the fetal arch pain scene and the small vessels there. But Yeah. At least based on fluoroscopy, it does not look like it's a heavily calcified lesion. It looks more like a soft plaque. And this is progression of disease over the last year. Um, yeah. This is not an area that we previously treated, so I, I think this is probably uh, soft plaque. Uh, given the runoff, uh, I'm, I, I like to be conservative, and I'm leaning towards just angioplasty and stent provisional stenting here. Regarding which balloons we're going to use, what options do we have, um, I think there's two main options I like to use in the SFA here. I, I would consider using uh, the Metacross from Terumo, which is nice. It's long, 200 length, rapid exchange. Uh, versus a Pacific Plus uh, balloon from uh, Medtronic. Um, since right now we already, we've already crossed with an 035 wire, I'm going to go ahead and likely just pre-dilate this with like a 4 millimeter Metacross and, and then potentially go with a probably a 5. It doesn't look that, that big of an SFA. So maybe just yeah. 5 millimeters to start with, see what that looks like, and then uh, decide whether we're going to stent it or not. How does the audience choose their cases first? Like, do you do a CTA before? Do you see how uh, calcified the plaque is? Because if this plaque was calcified, you'd have to get a uh, fetal approach and Not all yet. those things. Yeah, so um, I don't want to speak for Rami, but for us, at least, uh, for me, what I tend to do is I, I get a CTA or some sort of anatomic imaging before proceeding because I don't want to end up in a situation where we have, you know, three-level three, three level disease and having to try to fix... Uh, or try to run to try to fix a pedal act or a pedal disease from the uh, the wrist, which is, I wouldn't say impossible. We actually have done it once bef a couple of times, but uh, it's not fun and it's not easy, and you're sort of limited by access. And you know, as Rami pointed out, it, this wasn't really there about a year and a half, two years ago. So Ready? it's definitely or definitely progressed. So you know, the amount of calcification is probably right. not going to be a lot in terms of what's causing it's the injured. symptoms. Yeah. Hey guys, Sabine here. How you doing? Hey, Sabine. Hey, so uh, touching base on device limitations. So you have this 350 centimeter glide wire 
What other yeah. wires do we have available that are above 300 centimeters or longer than 300? So, uh, actually, it's pretty good. So there's a 300 centimeter glide wire. There's also um, there's some 018 wires or 014 or 018. Yeah, the 018 wires from uh, Boston Scientific. I think there's one called yeah. a uh, a jag wire, <laughs> which is like 400 centimeters. Um, we use uh, they do make a long glide wire advantage as well, um, but about 350 is sort of the limit of length on 035 wires. 60 or 80. Um, actually, I think there's an yeah. old school not old school. There's a woolly wire with with the yeah. uh, with the attachment. The I think you can get up to about 360. Yeah. With the with the 60. extension, you can get up to 360 with the woolly wire. Yeah. yeah, we're trying to decide right now between a six. So we have the option of a 660 Masago or a 6100 Masago. Yeah. Mm. And I'm thinking just <laughs> go with the uh, 100. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys Three. think? Yeah, like an 80 is probably the ideal, but you don't want to end up short having to put two 60s right across the canal. Yeah, that's a, that's exactly what Dan and I said. We said 80, but they don't have it. <laughs> Yeah, so what's nice about this scent is its, it's length. Have you done shortly, okay? It's the longest uh, SFA stent that I know of in terms of shaft length, in terms of getting it down. The only yeah. other alternative is the uh, the Medtronic Everflex with the Entrust system. Yep. Thanks. Um, this is also rapid exchange, which is nice. Yeah. But it's, it's self-expanding, night and all stent, like you would see uh, with other bare metal stents used in this area. So while you guys place this stent, is there anything special you guys would yeah. do uh, in terms of your exit strategy, you know, in terms of the band? Would you give another cocktail after taking it, before taking out the sheath, or anything like that? Um, no, I, I normally don't. Um, Thank you. I will image the vessel pre-op. If it looks like it's spasmed, I might, but I don't just okay. do it universally. What do you what do you do, Ro? Yeah, so same thing. I I would, I would image the when I put these big sheaths, long sheaths in from the the wrists. Uh, I tend to image the the artery. I have a low okay, threshold then. to give another oh, cocktail. Much. If it looks a little funny, I'll give give another cocktail and then just put the band on. Um, oh. And it seems to have worked uh, well that way. That All right, can, can you guys see the way this works? So this is it's a basically a, a pinwheel type of deployment system. You actually press the pinwheel down aggressively. You hear you hear a click. Now yep. it's ready to deploy, and usually you'll hear about ten clicks before it actually starts to to flower. Let me see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I'm putting a little bit of forward pressure on this. Okay. Good. Yep, and then pin this. This should be fully deployed. Yeah. Up. Perfect. So we're going to see this uh, post real quick, and then we're going to shoot over to room five. Uh, I think Aaron's chomping out the bit to show us his case. So. <laughs> Got it. Ron, is your plan to treat the proximal SFA oh, again here? too, or is it yeah. disease? I'm I'm probably gonna probably gonna treat that with like a five balloon. We'll see. I'm going to shoot this wire. first. I have the wire still on the... I still have the balloon still on the wire here. Ready? Yeah, we'll watch the wire. Wire came back a little bit. Okay. All right, go ahead. You have the pedal? Yeah. Yeah, it looks much better. Nice. Cool. I think there is a proximal problem because you see that contrast still a little bit hung up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think once we pull our sheath back and dilate yeah. that proximal segment, I think we'll be okay. All right, thanks, thanks a lot, Rami and Dan and uh, Omo. I All think right. we're going go to go over to room five. Uh, good work here.